In the depths of their hearts, the white populace harbored a malevolence that was unfathomable, inflicting pain and suffering on the black community in ways that transcended the darkest nightmares. The atrocities committed were beyond comprehension, from the ruthless exploitation of their free time to the unspeakable violation of their wives and the heart-wrenching sale of their offspring. Yet, in the face of such historical horrors, there are those among the white community who choose to drown their guilt in drink, turning a blind eye to the past. Now, more than ever, is the time for remorse, for reflection, and for using the lessons of history to uplift and empower the black community. The pain inflicted on African Americans is profound, and the scars of slavery may never fade. The chilling brutality they suffered is unimaginable, and the secrets kept by white slaveholders remain largely untold. And the healing? Only time will tell. The heart-wrenching institution of slavery was built on the brutal torment of black slaves. Their lives were scarred by cruel punishments such as whipping, amputation, and forced separation from loved ones. The whip's mark, a haunting reminder of their bondage, was etched not just on their bodies, but also on their souls. The whipping post, a chilling symbol of authority, echoed the brutal power of slave owners. Their whips, instruments of terror, stole peace and ensured slavery's cruel survival. The grounds trembled with dread. The whips echo a haunting reminder of enforced obedience. This reign of terror, physically and mentally scarring slaves, was justified by a twisted belief in maintaining authority for slavery's operation. Such heart-wrenching cruelty still resonates today. The heart-wrenching pain of families torn apart was a cruel facet of their unbearable existence. Children were ripped from their parents, siblings separated, shattering the unity among the enslaved. Their already dismal lives were steeped in deeper sorrow from these forced separations. Living in constant dread of execution, especially for crimes against whites, the enslaved faced a grim reality of frequent, brutal punishments. The fear of death was a constant shadow over their lives. Awareness of the brutal punishments such as sexual violation, branding, disfigurement and immolation heightened fears. Women bore an extra burden of distress due to enforced pregnancies, a monstrous form of sexual exploitation. The knowledge of such savage punishments like sexual abuse, branding, mutilation and burning amplified anxieties. The atrocities suffered by women were intensified by forced pregnancies, an especially vile form of sexual exploitation. The perpetual menace of physical violence deepened the entrenchment of slavery and its master-slave dynamic in the oppressive milieu. Slave masters discovered that fear was a potent instrument for preserving dominance and suppressing any hint of defiance or rebellion. The mental well-being of the enslaved was severely impacted as they existed in ceaseless dread of chastisement and death. But that was not all, the flogging. Individuals were ruthlessly sold into bondage, carrying with them the remnants of their homes and cherished ones, as well as the scars of shattered communities and the dread of an uncertain destiny. The domestic slave trade, in its cruel design, ripped families asunder, inflicting unbearable anguish on those enslaved. Amidst the harsh landscape of slave societies, the heart-wrenching spectacles of loved ones bidding goodbye with no assurance of reunion painted a grim portrait of the emotional wreckage wrought by this savage institution. The pervasive and brutal violence fueled the debate over the continued profitability of slavery. Slaves were not recognized as distinct individuals, but rather as precious assets for their labor in the fields and domestic service. This ruthless disregard for human dignity and family bonds laid bare the inhumanity of slavery. The transformation of human life into a tradable good intensified the injuries inflicted by the domestic slave trade, which viewed individuals as mere property and prioritized coal. But for what purpose were slaves traded? The economic benefits of slavery drove the horrific practices employed in the domestic slave trade. 
Slave owners often prioritize their financial gains over the empathy due to their enslaved victims. The fragmented communities were easier to control and less likely to rebel. Thus, family units were systematically destroyed. The fundamental moral insolvency of the domestic slave trade is evident in its prioritization of monetary profit over the well-being and humanity of its victims. Our next heart-wrenching discussion will delve into the harrowing experiences of African-American slaves in the northern and southern colonies. If our videos touch your heart and you yearn for more, we humbly request your support by subscribing to our channel and expressing your appreciation with a like. Together, we can build a compassionate community. Now, let's embark on this emotional journey. The treatment of black slaves in the US during the era of slavery was not uniform. It varied drastically across regions. The economic and legal disparities between the northeastern colonies and the brutal southern plantations significantly influenced the lives of those in chains. The southern colonies, dominated by vast plantation economies, were deeply intertwined with slavery, shaping their economies, politics and social identities. Slaves here were subjected to relentless cruelty daily, with whipping, torture and forced labour being the norm. The power dynamic was amplified by the close proximity of the slaveholders, who often resided on the plantations themselves, personally supervising the labour and administering punishments. The South was synonymous with a harsh and pitiless environment, where the economic reliance on large-scale agriculture contributed to the dehumanization of those in bondage. The northeastern colonies, with fewer plantations, had a different slave economy and function. A significant number of northerners contributed to the economy through domestic service or artisanal trade. The varying economic significance of slavery in this region influenced the legal systems, social classes and working conditions of enslaved Africans. The absence of massive plantations led to a decentralized system resulting in different experiences for the slaveholders and captives. The treatment disparities and the legal and social systems that governed slavery varied widely across regions. The South's plantation economy was so steeped in slavery that the legal system often sided with the slaveholders, legitimizing their brutal treatment of slaves. The rigid social hierarchies offered those in bondage very limited opportunities for advancement. In the North, slaves experienced slightly less oppression due to the less plantation-centric economy, which allowed for a broader range of legal systems and social stratifications. But how were the black laborers treated? The type of work that slaves were assigned significantly influenced their lives and the hardships they faced daily. Take the West Indies as an example. Unlike their Southern American counterparts, slaves there were expected to do more than just their primary job. They were also tasked with growing their own food, caring for the sick and elderly, and working the land in their spare time. The complexity of these additional burdens highlighted the tyranny that enslaved people faced daily. But what led to this treatment of black people? What was the mistake they made? Numerous racial, socio-economic and historical factors contributed to the violence that black Americans endured under slavery in the United States. The heart-wrenching oppression of black slaves stemmed from a complex web of intertwined factors, the disentanglement of which is challenging. The southern plantation economies, heavily reliant on the labor-intensive cultivation of cash crops like cotton and tobacco, were fundamentally built on the institution of slavery. In a system where economic gains often overshadowed moral considerations, the exploitation of enslaved individuals was inextricably linked to the profitability of these crops. Racism and the dehumanization of black individuals were the bedrock of slavery. White slaveholders and the wider society harbored the belief that African Americans were inherently inferior and thus destined for servitude. This degrading ideology enabled the rationalization of the cruel treatment of black slaves. 
To maintain dominance and suppress potential rebellions, slave masters often resorted to severe punishments and oppressive tactics against black slaves. A blend of extreme violence as a deterrent and the installation of fear effectively upheld the power imbalance between slaves and masters. White slaveholders occupied the pinnacle of social hierarchy, while black slaves were relegated to the bottom, a structure perpetuated by the institution of slavery. The subjugation of the enslaved served the economic interests of the ruling class. This hierarchical framework facilitated the systematic dehumanization and exploitation of black individuals. Systemic racism, rooted in slavery, persisted even after its formal abolition. Racial bias and inequality lingered long after the end of Reconstruction and the Jim Crow laws, largely due to the pervasive and institutionalized dehumanization of black slaves. How feasible is it for white individuals to atone for the damage inflicted upon black people? What drove white individuals to such extreme cruelty? Was it envy that led them to resort to brutality in their quest for control? Please share your thoughts in the space provided. In what ways have black individuals forgiven white people? Are you keen on viewing more of our videos? If you answered affirmatively, show your support by subscribing and hitting the bell icon. You'll find an array of videos on our channel.